The workbook preparation mainly involves restructuring your workbook and assigning name ranges to inputs, outputs, as well as fields that you might want to capture in the database. Note that the calculations across your entire workbook will be executed every time the calculations run on the web application, regardless of where in your spreadsheet formulas or data may be located. Next, you need to make sure that your workbook contains name ranges for any cell or range you want to include in your web application. Spreadsheet Web uses name ranges to tie workbook cells to web interface controls. Therefore, you need to have a name range for a specific cell or table to be able to use it in the web application. You don't need any name ranges for formulas or data that is being used by the formulas as this information will be detected by the system automatically. Let's take an example. Here I have an order entry workbook which I want to convert into a web application. We have various input types like text boxes for customer details, a date field for date selection, a drop down for item selection, and an order entry table. Most inputs like text boxes and calendar inputs must have a name range in the cell where you want to capture them. For example, for customer name, we have the name range customer. Inputs like drop downs and radio buttons that require a list of selections must have two name ranges. One for the cell where the input will be placed and one list name range where the control options will be coming from. In this example, cell B11 corresponds to an item selection and has a drop-down style menu. For this, we assign a name range to this cell, as well as the list this data is coming from, products. Table controls like input and output grids, as well as charts and maps, require a two-dimensional table name range. In our case, we're going to call this grid orders. Note that you can also include table headers in the name range selection to pull this information into your web application. Another piece of the system that you have to consider is the database module. If you want to capture any data in your web applications, you're going to need to define the database tables for your applications later. Database fields can be selected from name ranges in your workbook, and the names assigned to each field is what you're going to see in the database module. Note that Spreadsheet Web doesn't support macros in web applications and any macros in your workbook will be ignored by the system. Save your file when you're done and now you're ready to upload your file. Once your file is uploaded, you can begin building its user interface from the designer module with the same name. You can drag and drop the input and output controls from the left menu into the page to create them. Sections and containers are the structural elements that allow you to configure the page layout. In this example, the first control we want to create on the page is a date field. For this, dragging and dropping an input module into the page will insert the control. If you don't want to generate all controls manually, you can use the populate controls feature. This option is accessible from the edit page menu on the right, which becomes visible when you click on the page background. Simply select the worksheet name from this dropdown and press generate. The system will grab all name ranges from that worksheet and create the corresponding UI controls. You might want to configure the controls a bit after this. Drag and drop the controls around to rearrange their order on the page. To delete a control, select it, and then scroll to the bottom and press delete. Let's now take a look at configuring an input grid. The item column in this table is a drop-down control, so we must select list for the mask type and then select the name range containing the available options for that control from the list name range property. To allow only numbers in the count column, we can use the integer mask. The price column, on the other hand, can display the currency symbols and formatting when the currency mask type is selected. Finally, the total column also needs to use currency formatting. The Populate Controls feature was not able to populate some of the output fields. Typically, calculation results can be displayed in output controls or inside disabled input controls. In this example, the name range is order total, tax, and total do contain formulas, so the system will consider these to be output fields and prevent users from editing them. If you want to allow users to override the outcome of formula-based cells, you can use the Enable Formula Override feature.
Let's assume that you want to change the date field into a date picker instead. For this, simply remove the control by pressing delete and then drag and drop a calendar control where you want it on the page. In this case, the date formatting will be set to US date without a time selector. You can preview the page by pressing preview. The application preview is fully functional with calculations, but note that the save events will not be triggered. The page designer can be accessed from the current application summary panel by pressing the page designer button. A web application will have a home page by default. Pressing the edit button next to it, you can edit the page settings. You can change the page name from the name field. This information will be displayed during runtime if a navigation bar orientation is selected. In addition to its name, a page can also be associated with a small icon by clicking the Select Page Icon button and picking an icon from this window. The selected icon will be displayed to the left of the page name in the navigation bar. Icons can also be used as the only means to show pages in mobile browsers if you select Bottom for the mobile navigation bar orientation and enable this option. To remove an icon, click Remove Page Icon. The mobile navigation bar orientation property essentially allows configuring the navigation bar differently on mobile view. Selecting none will hide the navigation bar, whereas top will show the menu button on the top of the page. Selecting bottom will place the navigation bar on the bottom of the page and also give you the option to use icons only and hide the page names altogether. You can select from standard and link options from the page type property. A standard page is a page that allows you to build a user interface using that module in the designer interface. A link page allows entering a web URL, which will redirect the users when that page is clicked from the navigation bar during runtime. If you select the link, you will have the option to assign a static URL or get this value from the value of a cell. A splash screen can be added to standard pages of a web application as a way to show the end user that the application is processing. You can choose None to remove this splash screen, Partial for a partial splash screen on the side of the screen or full screen to have it covered the entire browser window. The navigation bar that is used to transition between application tabs will be on top of the page by default. You can remove the navigation bar altogether by selecting none and only allow the transition with the use of action button navigation. Allow exit on validation errors determines whether the users can navigate away from the page even if validation criteria are not met. An entire page can be disabled or made hidden by the value of a cell. To do this, you need to enable these options from the Visibility Toggle or Enable Toggle. Then, point it to a boolean name range from the spreadsheet. If the cell output is true, the page will be enabled or made visible. If it's false, it will be disabled or made hidden. If you have multiple pages in your web application, you can also redirect the users to a different page if the active page is disabled. Press the Update Page button to save your changes. Additional pages can be added by pressing the Add New button on the Page Designer screen. Input and output fields of a web application can be saved into the database by defining them in the Database Designer. We begin by pressing the Databases icon to go to the page where we're going to be creating and configuring Save Fields. In all applications, the first table we create is going to be considered the primary table. Giving it a name, we get our first database table. An application can have one primary table and any number of secondary tables. Using only a primary table should be enough for most applications. However, you must consider using secondary tables if you have a complicated data model. For instance, capturing the number of subscribers for 10 years per state will require a relatively large grid with several inputs. In this case, it's going to be easier for the database to handle this structure and move this data into a secondary table. Instead of assigning a column to each input, we're going to be able to establish a one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationship between the primary table and the secondary tables. But more on this later. We can edit existing database tables by pressing their icon. When we go into the primary table, we're going to see a set of system-generated fields already added into the database table. These are the fields the system automatically creates for each application, and these cannot be removed. You can choose to create a database before or after creating the web UI. 
if you choose to leave the database for later, it's going to be a bit easier to add the save fields using the add use columns button. This action will take you through all the fields that were used in the user interface designer. Alternatively, you can use the add button to add individual fields. The system will show us the first field coming from our user interface. Here we can see the associated name range for this field. The next option here is the data type. We can choose from boolean, integer, decimal, string, file, and date time. Most of these options will be detected automatically by the system. However, if you'd like to change the data type to be saved in the database, you can change it from this menu. The next field is the column name. This determines what this field is going to be called in the database. It is typically a good idea to assign an informative name so that you're going to be able to make sense of the data export. We can set a maximum length for this database field from the maximum length option. The default is 255 characters. You can remove this field to allow any number of characters. Pressing next will allow us to move on with the next save field. Once we're done, we can see the new fields added into the database table. We can go to the edit button to make changes to any of these fields. The delete button will remove the selected field from the database. Once we're done with this table, we can simply click the designer button to go back to the main page. We're going to be able to see our primary table added into the databases. We can add secondary tables into a database by pressing the add new button. We're going to need to choose from the two options, a one-to-one -one table or a one-to-many table. One-to-one -one tables are used to simply separate data fields into different tables. This can be useful for keeping different data in different tabs or avoiding the 1024 column limit SQL impose. One-to-many tables work a bit differently. Here, we can establish a relationship between the primary table and the one-to-many table in a way that multiple rows in the secondary table will correspond to a single row in the primary table. One-to-many tables are useful for keeping data structured as a grid or list. Once we make a selection, we're then going to need to select the name range the secondary table will be based upon. Make sure the has header information box is enabled if your name range contains headers. Same as before, we need to assign names and select the data types for each column the secondary table will govern. Your application isn't live yet. To make your application transition into production mode, you must first publish it by pressing the dial menu on the right and selecting Publish.